Yo, what is going on guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to a brand new Locals feature match. Here we are in round two for March 18th Locals. On the feature day, we've got Adventurer Scareclaw Cashtira on the left versus Sword Soul Tenny on the right. Yeah, let's see how this one plays out. Sword Soul been gaining a lot of popularity lately, mainly, I would think mainly because of the reprints um, from Magnificent Mavens and just the general lack of tier limit being in the format. But always nice to see the deck. It's a very, very fun deck to play, very fun deck to watch and commentate over. Also, reminder to donate to our ongoing fundraiser that we have right now. That'll be going on until one week after the final air date of the uh, fourth one deck one month episode for Photon Galaxy. One week after that, we'll be ending the fundraiser. We have some donation incentives. Uh, you can find those on the first episode of One Deck One Month for Galaxy. I'll leave a link to that up in the top right, but please consider donating if you haven't already so we can hit our goal and help raise money to help fight climate change. So, again, greatly appreciate that. So, we're going to see Sword Soul go first here in game one. We're going to see them lead with a Pot of Desires that will go uninterrupted. So, getting that nice draw two there, and then we're going to see him activate Sword Soul of Emergence. Going to go ahead and grab Moe. Normal summon Moe, reveal Taie. Looks like they also have Ecclesia and Nibiru in hand, so they do have plenty of follow up ready. All three names working out very, very... Well, I wouldn't really call Ecclesia a name, but... Might as well be a name. But uh, they are definitely ready for follow-up. So they're going to do Chainlink 1, Moyu, Chainlink 2, Chi Xiao. So they're going to go ahead and deck then before they draw. So they're going to go ahead and grab Moyi Or not Moyi rather Long Yun after the... Uh, on, off the Chi Xiao. And then they're going to go ahead and cut. And they're going to draw another card there. It looks like they drew a Triple Tactic Sound. They've got Blackout already in hand. Probably why they ended up doing the search the way that they did, or that specific chain link. We usually see it the other way around. But uh, I can see why going for it that way if you already got Blackout in hand. So we're going to see him set to and pass. Now they could have definitely kept extending with that hand there. Um, but the question is, are we going to respect Nibiru? And it looks like they've definitely decided to respect Nibiru here. I mean, they have Imperm Blackout, Chi Zhao, and Nibiru, and plenty of follow-up in hand. So they don't really need to fully commit there, especially if it means playing around one of the, the best hand traps um, to actually combat that deck. So we're going to see Scareclaw start their turn here by special summoning Griffin Rider, normal summoning aggro linking into the uh, Lightheart, grabbing the field spell. Field spell will go ahead and grab Reichart. And uh, this is still one of those decks that I have to pull up a lot of the cards for because I, I only commentate against this deck or commentate for this deck really not that often, honestly. I think this is literally our only Scareclaw player at our locals. Very, very dedicated to the cause. Um, so we're going to see him use Magician Souls there. Or not Magician Souls, Illusion of... Illusion of Chaos? I think that's the name. It's been a long time since I've seen Illusion as well. Back in the, uh, the based days. So now we're going to see him use Magician of Souls, dumping Illusion. Go ahead and special summon to the field. They're going to go ahead and activate... Looks to be Scareclaw Arrival. That's going to go ahead and revive a Scareclaw or Visa Starfrost in the graveyard. So we're going to revive Acro. And now we're going to see them use Sword Soul Blackout here. They're going to go ahead and target Chi Zhao and target Acro and target Magician Souls. And uh, using the graveyard effect of Arrival here, it says if a Scareclaw, Link Monster, or Monster you control would be destroyed by a battle card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. Um. So yeah, it looks like they, they targeted Lightheart and uh, Acro then, I'm guessing. Instead of Magician Souls, I feel like you'd want to pop Magician Souls and the Griffin Rider there. So I think that was maybe a little bit of a misplay from our Sword Soul player. I think, again, are probably better high-value targets to get rid of. Like, getting rid of the Magician Souls, I feel like it's definitely a no-brainer because that's going to cut off a draw two at some point, or at least a draw one. And then Griffin Rider is just Griffin Rider. So either way, continuing on here, we're going to see our Scareclaw player activate Defanging. Continuous spell. I think this is new. Your opponent cannot target Scareclaw Link Monsters or Visa Starfrost. You control with card effects. Also, they cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Banish any monster destroyed by battle with a Scareclaw Link Monster or Visa Starfrost. You control. You can banish one Scareclaw Link Monster from your graveyard from your field or graveyard, then target one card your opponent controls. Destroy it. So, you're going to use that to get rid of the set that the opponent had there, which was that tactics that they decided to set as a bluff. And now we're going to see him use Magician Souls, getting rid of the field spell. Completely getting rid of the entire board here. 
getting rid of the field spell, right? And uh, now they're going to go ahead and uh, link into Tryheart, which basically makes it so it is unaffected by anything that activates effects in defense. Unaffected by the activate effects of defense position monsters. And all face-up monsters in the field are changed to defense position. So, kind of a decent boss monster here, although it won't do too much to Nibiru. It's going to come down and clear the other two, I think Astra and Acro there, alongside the Triheart, getting rid of those for a token. So, was working on setting up a pretty good board there. But, uh, that board is no longer existing. But it looks like they still have a few plays here to follow up. They are going to set one. Which I think that was Scareclaw Trap. I think that was Scareclaw Twinsaw. This, I think, is like Blackout, but for Scareclaw. Should be one Scareclaw monster, then target two cards your opponent controls, destroy them. And if you do, if you control Visa Starfrost, banish those destroyed cards instead. So yeah, very, very similar to Blackout. Just with a little extra, extra text on it does have another effect as well but we're gonna see him pass turn there and we're gonna see our sword soul player lead with long yun discarding i think that was taya or no shithana rather and they're gonna go for a synchro 10 here but deciding exactly which synchro 10 they would like to go for they're looking at chen ying now, they did resolve Desire, so Chenging would come out with an extra 1,000 attack points. While his opponent's monsters would be losing 1,000 attack, I think, and defense. They are going to just go ahead and sickle for Baron. Can never go wrong with Baron Fleur. Omni Negate, and nice bit of spot removal, and an extender. They'll burn for 12, then they're going to use Baron's effect, targeting the set card. And it is the Twin Saw. Or they're not targeting the set card, they're just targeting the token. And yeah, they're going to normal summon Taya and then immediately mid defeat. Upon seeing the Taya, realizing the game is over, they will have enough damage on board. And we are into game two. Quick reminder, guys, check out Imperium Duelist at the link below if you haven't already. You guys shop and check out using uh, my discount code, Winter Kills Enough, to save 10% off your entire order and support the channel in the process. They do have some amazing TCG products and accessories. Well, TCG accessories, play mats, deck boxes, dice, binders, and more. So check them out at the link below. Again, my discount code is down there as well. So, Sword Soul up 1 0 over Adventure Scareclaw Cash. We'll see if they can bring it back here in game two. They're going to start by special summoning that Alti Cashier Fenrir. Speaking of, I've, I've literally not pulled an Alti in months, it feels like. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like everybody around me at Locals is pulling Altis except me. But everybody probably feels that way at some point. So we're going to go ahead and see him add Scareclaw Cash, and he's going to summon that by banishing the Defanging, and then we're going to go ahead and go for Draco Sack, detaching Fenrir, and then going into Cherubini, and this is, I'm assuming, supposed to go ahead and send Enchantress, because it is a level 3, level 3 moment, and uh, yeah, they'll send Enchantress. And then activate Enchantress Effect, that's going to go ahead and get Ash. So, really cool way to get into their adventure plays there with the Cash Tier stuff. Actual level 3 moment. Looks like they still have some extenders here, though. I think I see right Cart Nan, although I'm not sure how much that's going to do for them. Because they could get into Lightheart, but I'm not sure if Lightheart has to be... For this card's Link Summon, you can only use monsters in your main monster zone as material. This card's Link Summon the extra monster zone, yeah. So, I was going to say, I thought Lightheart had something specific about being summoned in the extra monster zone. And it does. I mean, they could use Draco Sack to tribute itself off to pop the Cherubini. I'm pretty sure Draco Sack can clear any card, if I'm not mistaken. But they do have the Field Spell already, so they want to activate Rykphobia. And it looks like they're going to go ahead and grab Visa Starfrost. They could use Visa Starfrost to clear the Cherubini out of the EMZ. So they'll do just that. They're going to activate Visa Starfrost, tributing off while destroying the Cherubini rather than they go ahead and link 
off the Visa Star Frost into Lightheart, and then they'll go ahead and activate Lightheart's effect. So go ahead and add one Primitive Planet Rykphobia. So I'll have another copy of that ready for follow-up. And since they were denied their adventure engine here, I'm not entirely sure what kind of board they're going to be able to put up. I feel like maybe at most it might just be Tryheart. So they're going to go ahead and normal summon Rykar. And, well, Tryheart plus that Scareclaw Trap, which I believe is Scareclaw Sclash, which is a uh, spot removal. Or no, I think it's a negate. It's kind of like an impermanence. Yeah, when your opponent activates a card or effect while you control a Scareclaw monster and you're in the extra monster zone, you can send this face-up card to the graveyard and negate that effect. Uh, but it looks like instead of adding Splash, they are going to go ahead and add Scareclaw Twinsaw, which again is basically just uh, Blackout for Scareclaw deck. Should be one Scareclaw monster. Then target two cards your opponent controls, destroy them. And if you do, if you control Visa Starfrost, banish those destroyed cards instead of sending them to the graveyard. If a Link 3 or higher monster is on the field, you can banish the card from your graveyard. For the rest of the turn, neither player can activate the effects of Link monsters on the field. Yeah, that's a pretty uh, solid secondary effect. And it looks like before they can go any further, though, they are going to get hit with another Nibiru. That is a primal moment right there. When the Rock. Me, when the Rock. And Harpy's Feather Duster. Oh my goodness. So that's going to clear a field spell. Going to clear Twin Saw, Normal Summon Moe, Reveal Vashuda. And uh, yeah, this is just a rough, rough game for our Scareclaw player here. They have that Vashuda in hand, so they could just go ahead and use Vashuda in hand right now while they have that token on field, get rid of the token that the opponent has. And uh, they really just need Shi Zhao into Long Yun, and that is going to be game since they already have the Nibiru on field. Really not much they have to worry about here because they have that Vashuda in hand, so they could just synchro for Shi Zhao here. And they know one of the cards in hand is the field spell, so they're going to go ahead and use Vashuda though right now, it looks like. And then they're going to go ahead and synchro into Shi Zhao. Looks like it's going to be Chainlink 1 Chi Xiao, Chainlink 2 Moe, or Chainlink 1. We'll see what the chain. So, yeah, Chainlink 2 Moe, Chainlink 1 Chi Xiao here. So, they'll go ahead and draw. And I imagine if they haven't drawn Long Yun or they don't already have Long Yun in hand, they're probably going to go ahead and search it. But, um, looks like they do. They're searching Taya. And it looks like actually they're just playing it conservative here. They are really respecting Nibiru here. I'm not sure if both cards in hand are known at this point, but they definitely know the field spell, and I don't know if they know the other cards. So they're just going to go ahead and set one and pass. They have Taya in hand for follow-up. Really, really strong follow-up. They have Chi Zhao and what could possibly be a Blackout or an Imperm. So we'll see what our Scareclaw Cash player can do here to kind of recover. They have drawn Ash Blossom for turn, which is not the best draw you want to have for turn here. So they're, they're going to go ahead and activate Field Spell. In fact, to go ahead and search. And it looks like, yeah, our Sword Soul player has an Ash Blossom of their own. And they do have that one, or it's not even a, a Scareclaw monster. It's Griffin Rider in hand. Yeah, so they're going to go ahead and special Griffin Rider, Normal Summon Ash, tempt to go for Baron. But it's going to get hit with Book of Eclipse. And this means they will get a draw two in the end phase here. So is it worth just... Well, I mean, they, they have field spells still, actually. There are more than three defense position monsters on the field, so they get a free pop, and they get a draw two. Looks like they draw an Enchantress and Token Collector. So Token Collector could go in here. Uh, very much so. And we're just going to see how this turn plays out. We know he has Taya in hand. So there's a little bit of context I have for this particular game that you guys don't have necessarily. So we see him normal summon or special summon Ecclesia, normal summon Taya, and then just synchro right into Boxia. I believe he end up, ends up going for Boxia here. Yeah, so they'll go ahead and spin one and get a send. And they could just send a Taya if they wanted to. Well, they're almost, they're actually only at uh, 2200, so they just need to spin the Griffin Rider. And then just battle phase, attack over the uh, Ash with the Boxia, and then attack for game with the Nibiru. And uh, yeah, I, I believe uh, before this match started, our Scareclaw player was like, finally I can use these uh, token collectors to my side. You know, because he had been siding them previously because, you know, a lot of people have been playing Sword Soul recently at local, so he came prepared. But 
He's like, you know what? I heard you say that at the start of the match. I'm going to try to respect Token Collector here. Although, even if the Token Collector did come down, it would have hit the field as a decent sized body. So, it could have blocked for some damage. But, yeah, either way, don't know if it would have mattered a whole lot. But, yeah, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Last but not least, a big shout out goes to our Divine Level channel members here Misfit, HCH Cyber, Cadillac C4, and Pony Stark. Thank you guys so much as always for extremely kind and very generous support of the channel.